<laughs> we're in this like crappy office building and it's just not working. And then we're poking flowers in it. And then it was like, ta-da, here's this piece of shit that he just created on stage. So my, my biggest advice to anybody becoming an entrepreneur is to just know and identify your weaknesses and then, you know, have people that take care of that for you. Welcome. Today we are here with Derek Woodruff, a Laurel superstar. Oh, that's a big hat to wear. Uh, I, think that's, <laughs> I mean, I think that's where you start when you've been on, you've been everywhere. You've won, you've won awards, you've led conferences, you've spoken at conferences, and you've been on TV. I do all that, yeah. 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 So I think that makes you a floral superstar. All right, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll <laughs> entrepreneur, <laughs> entrepreneur through and through. And like most, we're going to, I'm sure there's been bumps in the road. There's been times where you couldn't have been any higher. In times you couldn't have been any lower, and sometimes those happened in the same day and or week. Yeah, it can. <laughs> it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> so take us back, Derek. You get you jumping into the world of flowers. Now I remember you from like dropping off centerpieces at Morrisons and all that, but you've mm -hmm. been doing way before that. So yeah, how'd you get into the business, and I, why? I actually got into into the floral business as a teenager. Okay, um, I went to vocational school for in high school, and right. what led to that was just an interest in in plant science. I was a plant nerd. And uh, when I started this program in, in high school, I was a junior, I was 16, and their programming was either landscape, architecture, or floral design. And in my mind, floral design would be a lot less heavy lifting. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately wrong. Um, I had a really great uh, network of teachers that fostered my creativity. Right. And um, I was, our curriculum was based on the Great Lakes Floral Association Certified Florist Program. So then we were leaving with a, a trade certificate, uh, but also like uh, just designing on a regular basis because they had a flower shop in the school and uh, getting me involved in competitions, which led to lots of things later on. So that's kind of how I got into it. So that's how you got into it. Now, fast forward to, I've decided I'm going to stop working for somebody because you did, you had, a, you had a couple jobs where you worked for other people in the business. Yeah. Actually. Yep. How did that go? And and while you were doing that, did you know, how about, let's start with that. Did you already know, like, I'm doing this for myself one day? I never wanted to work for myself. Really? It's, I, entrepreneurship is hard. Yeah. And you, people talk about how hard it is all the time, yeah. you know, probably more than the rewards, I would say. Yeah. That's more casual and more normal to hear about how challenging it is to be your own boss, right? Yeah. So I never really wanted to have that. Um, I moved to Traverse City, this is 20 years ago now, and I worked for Hibbard's Floral Design oh, yeah. back in the day. Okay. And then uh, I ended up moving from that to another flower shop, Weavers and Distinctive, which used to be across from the hospital. And I kind of maxed out there. I was doing like 50, 60 weddings in a season, which is a ton. You know, it's, it's a lot. And then uh, managing uh, floral staff there and day-to-day -day operations. And I, you know, I was like 24 at this time. And then I, I was like, I have to get out of this because it was so hard. And I felt like I was like, I could just be doing this on my own and be making more money. Yep. That, it's true, but it's also a different part. Yeah. Right? Oh, for sure. So I actually left there to start my own company, Floral Underground. And I worked at More Souls yep. as they were starting because I didn't feel it was ethical to be working at another flower shop. Sure. I was starting my own. So you worked business. for Misha and Jeff? Exactly. Okay. Right when they opened, actually, they interviewed me before they opened. When they get to the new spot? Yeah, in the little spot. Yeah. On the, also, the triangle floor. building, yeah. it's no longer there. Sliver. That was awesome. It was a great spot. And I had no coffee experience or anything. And they just liked my personality. And, you know, I was willing to learn whatever they wanted to teach me or train me. So I did that for about a year and a half to two years while I started my business. Just knowing, like, I can't really go work for anybody else at this point. I yeah. just kind of reached the ceiling. Trying to make it happen. Yeah. So again, something that's crazy is is I talk to business owners all the time, and something that we have here is we focus on the right people, not the not the job description. So like we've hired right. people like Misha and Jeff. They hired you because you were the right person, right? Not because you were the coffee expert who knew about this bean and that bean and this. Yeah, you were the right person for that for that job, and they knew that you would learn it what you needed to learn to get the job done. And this is very popular theory or. Uh, philosophy and floral design right now. Like people, you, there's a florist across the street from you right now and they're looking for floral designer help. Well, there's no floral designers out there that are, aren't employed already, right? 
So it's about finding the right people. Who's a good fit for your business that you can, you know, groom or teach what mesh, you want to do. Who meshes. Yeah. Like, are they good with customers? Do they have a good eye? Like, how is how are they at taking instruction and how responsible are they? Like, these are the important things right now. Not, I don't care what your floral design skill is. I think it's important in all business. I'll tell you this right now. We, like, so the first, second job I hired was a marketing position, video job. And Sean, who was just in here, who just met, he applied for the job. And literally the way he applied to the job, no joke, he messaged me, text messaged me. He said, I have no experience of what you're asking, but I know I'll learn it. And I knew, I'm like, I knew Sean. So I'm like, this is the right guy. Like, A, he's just upfront and honest. Yeah. He's like, but I'm willing to learn it. I knew his work ethic because I knew where he worked before and what he was doing. So, and my wife loved him. So that was an automatic win, right? Like, sure. Like, I knew he was a good dude. My wife loves him. And I knew he was a hard worker. I knew, self admittedly, he knew shit about the business. <laughs> and we brought him on, and it's been amazing. Like, I mean, the stuff that you're seeing, all the camera equipment upstairs, same with Kyle. And then Kyle tried to leave, and I wouldn't let him leave. <laughs> <laughs> He's so, still here. So. Yeah. So but what you're saying, though, is like, I think it, I always say, you both, both hit other pillars, but I always say every business is the same if you take the type of business that is off. Like flowers, real estate brokerage, uh, an auto body shop, it's about a hair design place, a uh, hair design, uh, uh, you know, a hair salon. Sure. It's the same. And you found that in your in your careers or as you talk to people, like it, the steps are the same no matter what entrepreneur you're talking to. For sure. Yes, 100%. It is just that you have to do this, this, and this. I don't care what your business is. Right. And so here you are. I'm doing Floral Underground. I'm ready to make this thing rip, right? And so then how do you get your name out to do this? Like, Because it's, it's, you're starting fresh. I mean, you work for people, but you worked for people. Now, here I am. I'm on the scene. I'm taking over. And you, and you have. And how'd you do it? Well, the easiest way to be successful and as like a floral designer in Traverse City or in this area is just to, you do weddings. And, yep. you know, Kyle could speak to Meg about doing weddings and yep. as a photographer, you yep. know what I mean? Um, so there's there's an abundance of business in that. And so in that, all you have to do is mesh with the bride, her mom, whatever. So it's all easy. you have to do? And that's, that's all you have to do. do. <laughs> They'll give you money if they like you, right? It's the hardest part. So, I mean, I, I sold that pretty easily. But <laughs> like to have some kind of brand identity... You know, I, I went after accounts that I wanted. So one of them was Red Ginger. Yep. And I I made this really cool design and I integrated like napkin rings and just like really weird functional things in the restaurant. And the owner, Pam, was really impressed with that and how I aggressively came in and wanted this business. I said, I want to do your flowers here. And I still do them to this day. Really? Yeah. And that was a that was a brand flex, right? That was like how I could design that was different from everybody else in town. And I want you to pick me and let's negotiate what that means. And we did. So you just went in and said, by the way, you're hiring me. Yeah. And here's what you're going to pay me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of, you know, it doesn't always work out like that. Oh, no, I know. Uh, Grand Traverse Resort. That was another one. I you know, their lobby flowers were very like basic. And they yeah. said, you have this upscale hotel. You need like cool flowers in here. So I brought them some samples. I said, let's do this. And, and I started doing that. And I have lots of accounts like that. Cambria Suites, I did that for them for the longest time. Like just really cool, badass underwater arrangements. That was kind of my thing at the time. But nobody else was doing that in town. So I wanted work that people could see it and say, oh, that's Floral Underground. But you also, what you said reminds me of, of, of a guest that we had, Alyssa Lewandowski, of, of Good People. Oh, okay. She's, she has a, she goes after her clients. She has a form. Like, you have to fill a form and have a conversation with her before she takes you. That's good. Right? And what you said, though, was you went after, you said the same thing. I went after accounts I wanted based on my brand identity. Yeah. Like, you, you're not just going into 7-Eleven. Yeah. And I wanted your flowers. Yeah. So you're fine. You, you actively seek accounts out that you want to work with. What if somebody, would you turn down work if somebody didn't mesh with you? Would you say that? I have. Okay. Tell me about that. Yeah. That's the stuff everybody needs to hear. Because, uh, you know, if you're not going to jive, it's not sustainable long term. Yeah. Right. So if you, you know, and this was, uh, I've had other accounts like this where you're, you're going and you're looking and you're, you're like, here's what I can do for you. And then if like whoever you're working with is like, no, we want this and you're just not going to meet it. It's like, well, I'm going to give you a referral then because yeah. you're not going to be satisfied with my work and I'm not going to be satisfied doing this work. And it's not always about money, right? It's about, you know, just business in general. Yeah. So I think that that is so important and it's, it's hard when you're first coming up. When you're first coming up, you have to do some, but it sounds like what you did right away was, this is my brand. This is what I'm going after. I don't give a shit because I have a side job. So you you had a job yeah. making, making some money. 
probably not making money enough money to like ex- like live off of forever if right. if you but you're okay. making exactly <laughs> at the time yeah while you're growing a little side business and getting some income so you're the second person that's done it that way you know Ellie from from Archie's Dog Co mm-hmm. she still has a job and she's still working that job while she's crushing it with that company so it sounds to me like that gave you the confidence to say you know what I don't have to take everybody so. There's two types of entrepreneurs, ones that just go all the way in, quit everything they're doing and say, fuck it, let's roll. Other ones who are more pragmatic and sometimes I think smarter, they go, let me keep this gig over here, make my passion project a passion project until it becomes the main thing. And that sounds like what you did. And I, I kind of feel like uh, your whatever your passion project is, is always evolving too. Yeah. Um, so I'll always kind of keep things in the wings that I'm like working on and give some energy to that and give some energy to this. So it kind of feeds that passion project. So even though I like had quit that job after like two years, there was still a bit of that. Like yeah. I would still take on some things that I was like, ah, this isn't long term, but this will help feed this. Yeah. Um. So, you know, there's things that are definite, definite no. And then there's some things where I'm like, this is like a feed the need kind of thing. Okay. And I would roll with it. And one big thing now I can tell you is that like weddings, I don't really do weddings anymore. I'll do a couple here and there. It's usually family members or it's somebody I know, but you know, I don't have a wedding inquiry on my website because I don't do it. I don't like it. Yep. I like certain parts of it, but like when you do a wedding, like wedding floral package, you have to do the whole picture and I'm not into it. So be honest with me. Someone calls you up and says, Derek, I know you don't do weddings anymore. I'm going to pay you 10 times your normal rate. Are you <laughs> might just, make it work. <laughs> I was wondering where, where, where it lies. But seriously, like like most people, if somebody, like if, if John from down the street, from my office down the road calls you and says, hey, I heard you're the best in town. I want you to do my wedding. And you're like, sorry, dude, I don't do weddings. Yeah, usually my travel schedule doesn't allow for it anyway. I, I'm gone a lot. Yeah, we're going to get into that too. And it's uh, kind of seasonal, so it's predictable. But I also like, I keep my calendar open in case other opportunities come up that are more yeah. important to me than a wedding. And if I have a wedding it's like well i'm tied to this so i can't do anything else so so the wedding the thing you don't like ties you down from keeping you able to do things that you really care about doing for sure again it's it's customer selection yeah it's job selection and it's a theme throughout all of these interviews so far we've only done the you're our fourth but i've talked to other entrepreneurs in real life not just on a podcast and it's a theme of like when you get to a certain point and you know who you are as a person and you know what your brand represents everything else just has to fuck off. Yeah. And it will fall off eventually. Like when when you're working towards, again, that like bigger thing that you're yeah. feeding, uh, you can look around and say like, oh, I don't need to do X, Y, or Z anymore. I can just focus on what this is. So let's get into the meat potatoes here. You are a celebrity. <laughs> like you're, you people, people bring you in to teach, you bring, conf- you teach conferences. I do. Yeah. So people bring you, they fly you in. Yep. Right. So how in the hell? Tell me how that originated. Like, how does someone go, we need Derek here ASAP? Like, when did that happen? How did that happen? What was the evolution of that process? It was it was something I wanted to do. And I, you know, a little background on me, like I uh, was in the theater, like okay. in local theater here. I did theater in high school. And just like by personality, I'm a Leo, like, and I feel like I'm a true Leo. Um, okay. Like, you know, maybe, maybe, yeah, okay. you know, lots of attention, right? <laughs> 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 I'll do that. Like, I'm this... You know, I have a lion underneath here. Okay. <laughs> that's that's just it. That's how, that's how I am. So when I started going to like state conventions, for example, like the Great Lakes Floral Association, I saw these designers on stage and like I saw their accolades, like all the things that they've achieved throughout their career. Now they're on the stage and here we are and we're learning from them. And I was like, you know, taking it all in like a sponge. This is so cool. And someday I want to be that. I want to be the person that's on the stage sharing these experiences and teaching people what cool things I can do because I'm going to do cool things someday. I'm sure. So that was the seed planted. Uh, fast. Quick, quick question. Yeah. Did you get to talk to those people off stage? Oh, yeah. yeah. So the name of this podcast is Proximity. It's all about being around the right people. And mm-hmm. again, the theme here is you found somebody who was kind of like a mentor to you. Sure. Yeah. Right? They were doing what you wanted to do. And then you got close to, close enough to them and humble enough to say, hey, I don't know what you know, but I want to know what you know. Right. Right? So would you be willing to teach me? And they were humble enough and nice enough to be like, well, you know what? In this world, there's not competition. There's enough for everybody. Yes, I'll teach you. And that's what yep. this is all about, entrepreneurship. So right. I interrupted you. Proximity for sure. You know, and the, some of these people became my mentors, whether, you know, they were in the state and they're heavily involved in this association 
Um, or they just wanted to take me under their wing because they saw something in me sure. that said like, yeah, this kid wants to do this, put him on stage. And they did. Like as a kid, I was on this stage multiple times. They'd give me a microphone and they'd ask me my opinion about something or because I was, I was there. I had like the energy to do it. And, it and they fed that energy. Right. And so they just, they just lifted you up. Yeah, exactly. Most successful people will lift others up. 100%. Yeah. I've, I've found in my life, maybe, and you tell me, people who have been doing big things and they're very successful, their business is growing successful, they're not worried about anybody coming in and saying, and then taking them out. There's always that fear, like, present that you're going to lose relevance some way, shape, or form. But, like, as you mature, especially as a business owner, and I feel like I've done this too as a person, I, that fear just kind of, like, falls off. Yeah. And you're just like, I'm so weird. Nobody's going to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're watching the stage. You're, you're, you're going to these conferences. You you then started going. You won some awards at these things. I mean, you. Yeah, I was a, com- a competitive designer. Yeah. Too. So tell us about that. And that was another, you know, my teachers pushed me into a student competition when I was 16 and I won. Yep. So of course, I got all cocky. And then year after year, I'm in the professional division in the same competition and I didn't win anything. <laughs> So after like seven years of losing, I like started to go to my mentors and the evaluators and were like, hey, will you look at my work and tell me why I'm not winning? And they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. You know, and they'll, they'll pick something up and they'll walk me through. They'll be like, yeah, you've got glue strings on the back here. I was like, oh, they look at the back? Like, yes. Like there's a little sharp piece of wire sticking out here. A bride could cut her hand. I was like, really? Like that's important? When you start to pay attention to the things that you're being critiqued on, then you start doing better. So I immediately started winning. Of course, I love winning. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Very competitive. Um, so that love for competition, like branched me out into other communities of competition, just like regional, national. Um, I'm, so at this point I'm considered a national floral design champion. Yeah. I want, and I was going to ask that, but see all of, all of my guests in so far have led me right in. <laughs> and so you've been crushing that so far. So there we go. So we all want to touch on the national floral champion design champion and I want to touch on your time on reality television. Yeah, those so, two definitely tie in together. So let, let's 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 rock those out. I want to hear about it. So be, because How did you become um, a national floral design champion. I uh you know competed at state level and then again like I said moved to regional level and then there's uh national competitions which anybody in the United States can compete in and yep. some from outside of the United States. Yep. I, I competed in a competition uh, called the Gateway to the Americas Cup, and that's an international, that's South America, Central America, North America, and all countries can participate in that. That's huge. I got crushed. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned a lot, so yeah. it's good. And all of those competitions led me to different accolades. Like, I, I've got a lot of designations after my name, like yeah. kind of almost more letters after my name than in my <laughs> name. It's a little ridiculous. But that was a goal of mine. I'm like, I want all these different accreditations. Yeah. One of them, AIFD, is kind of the PhD of floral design. It's mm-hmm. um, accredited in floral design through the American Institute of Floral Designers. So when I did that, that's like a live floral design time management test with materials that give you these different arrangements you need to make, and you're critiqued on them, on the principles and elements of design and your creativity, your time management, your use of um, design techniques, things like that. And from that, uh, somebody saw my table, saw my work, so I was this young dude, and when a producer for a television show, casting director, reached out and said, hey, you know anybody that'd be a good fit for this? We want somebody young. We want somebody with some personality, somebody that's very creative. And he's like, oh, I know just the kid. That was me. So before we get to this television, I want to, you're a lifelong learner. Always. You're you're humble enough to ask for, like literally what led you to success originally to, be, to win these competitions was you were humble enough to go ask, like critique me. Eventually. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. You lose and you learn. I learned. Right. So so you were humble enough to go ask for, hey, critique me. I want to know. I want to learn. Like, I think all entrepreneurs, all good ones and people, uh, not good, successful businesses are led by people who just want to learn, learn, learn. And that seems to be you. Yeah. The goal is success. You're like, I wanted to be successful. Yep. So well, you're a competitive person. And yeah. I mean, most entrepreneurs are competitive, right? Or else, how do you do this? And then second, you just a love for learning. And, and that's amazing because there's not a lot of people that that understand how important it is to never stop learning your craft. Like, yeah. I made it. I'm done. And then all of a sudden they fall off because somebody else was willing to learn and learn and learn and learn. And there's all, just always something new. But you don't seem the type of dude to get comfortable. No. <laughs> if I'm comfortable, I'm bored. Yeah. I do not like to be bored. <laughs> so now producer finds you and they say, hey, who do you know? And these people come in and say, Derek's our guy. Yeah. So- 
then tell me that process. I'm sure there was like interviews. There was. There was. You had to go someplace and talk. So tell us how that works out. Uh, well, luckily, you know, this was for a competition reality show. And I, at the time, was a very seasoned competitor. So I had lots of pictures or demonstrations and awards of my work. I had to submit kind of a portfolio. I had to have some interviews over the phone. And this is a lot. This is all about personality when it comes to reality TV. So I had to do like a psychological screening. Like they wanted to know I wasn't going to go crazy, kill people, whatever. <laughs> If they brought me out to do this and then you got to put a lot on the line. They're like, oh, yeah, can you uproot your life and turn everything off and just come out here for a month and do this without talking or managing anything? And it's like, well, I will. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Yeah. And so I did. Yeah. And then, OK, tell us the show. Tell us. I'm sure still you can still probably find us. You can. Yeah. It's called The Arrangement. Yep. We say um, you can find it on iTunes and you can find it on Amazon. Okay. Um, and it's just an eight episode, just one season. If you're, if you've ever heard of or have seen RuPaul's Drag Race, it's the same production company. Okay. And if you're a fan of those shows and you watch this, you'll be like, "This is RuPaul's Drag Race, but with floral design." <laughs> the same exact same thing. show. Yeah, I can't even watch RuPaul's Drag Race because it's so reminiscent of that experience. I was like, I just see through all of this. And you took, I think, third or second. It was the second runner up. So okay, third, yeah. third place in that show, and then. What did that do for you? That had to, obviously being on TV always sort of lends some more credibility or was it the opposite? Like, oh, you're just a, you're just a reality TV guy. It was, it was really good for me because yeah. like, uh, different people would reach out to me. Well, then I had this name on the scene. So when we come back to the idea of like speaking on stage, now I've got this credibility at this yep. clout. Everybody wants to hear that story. But also uh, a marketing director from a company that I work close with now, they're called Syndicate Sales. They're out of Kokomo, Indiana. And they make hard goods for the industry. So vases and tools and all these different things that floral designers use, they make those things. And they've had these design teams over the years. Well, they reached out to me and they're like, we want you to come and do videos for our company that we can show at trade shows, things like that. So it started really small with something like that. And now I'm their education lead and their brand ambassador. Oh, so that ballooned into this whole other career for me. Wow. It's like I have my business and then I've got this, which used to be a side hustle. Now it's yeah. like full time. On top of my full time business, <laughs> so now you're a t now you're a teacher. Yeah, yeah. This is, dude. I can't explain to you the craziness of the parallels. Like everybody who's been successful in their job so far ends up becoming a, a teacher of some sort for other people, like the like coaching. And, yeah, and that's again, it's that when you're successful and you see success, you don't you don't limit that. You don't see like, oh, there's only this much success in the world. It's abundant. Mm -hmm. Right, everybody can have it, and if I can help somebody get it their way, then I just became more successful. Actually, yeah, yeah, I love to share, I love to teach, and I love to learn. And we talked about this is like you just continue to learn everywhere you go. Uh, but something that's important to me is sharing what I learned, but also giving credit to how I learned. It Correct is really important to me because if I ever saw somebody speaking from stage something I taught them and I don't get credit for that, like that sucks. Yeah. So anytime I'm teaching something to somebody, it's that, oh, my good friend so-and-so uh, taught me this. You can follow them on Instagram. Like, it's a really cool technique. And then somebody in the room will show me something that they've learned. And I can take that and I can share that when I'm on a different platform and talk about where I learned it and yep. why it was important for what we were doing. So one hand washes the other. It all comes back. For around. sure. So how long did okay, you start your business? How old were you started the business? I was 24. 24. How, how long before, like, you were on stage presenting to people like your um it was actually soon after that i, th I want to say like just a couple of years and i had um been invited to do a program at the great lakes floral association which is kind of where i started yep. you know now i'm an entrepreneur and i want to speak on stage and i need some experience um so people start asking me like you know oh will you come and do a program on this so and so is your sponsor will you do a program on that and so and so is going to sponsor you and i'm like okay cool well, in my brain at the time, I, I wanted to do something different. I thought it was kind of boring to be uh, sitting in an audience, like listening to somebody just talk at me the whole time. Yep. So I tried different things. Some things not successful. That's okay. Some things were super fun. Some things people loved and people hated. What but... did you try that just failed miserably? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is what I want to know about. Well, I did this program. And I've since redeemed myself. It was at a wholesale florist, which, you know, a wholesale florist is a big warehouse. Okay. okay. There's nothing glamorous about it. Yep. Well, they'll bring designers in to do these educational programs. They usually set up stage and try to do like pipe and drape and light you appropriately. And 
but it's a warehouse. It's still a dirty warehouse. So I tried to make it cool while I was in a, you know, in the theater at the time. So we loved to dance and we tried to put a little dance spin on things, right? Just to keep things interesting. Well, a lot of times I wouldn't try things ahead of time. It was just an idea in my head. And this was one of those times. And we're like, we thought it would be cool and edgy and urban to do like something with spray paint. Like, so we built this wall out of these foam bricks that hold water for flowers, like a brick wall. Well, it's like seeping all over the floor on this cardboard mush. And then we're like spray painting on it, thinking it's going to hold this paint really well. It's just kind of like soaking into it. And we're trying to do all this during like an opening number. And people are like fanning their faces because the spray paint is so stinky. And we're in this like crappy office building and it's just not working. And then we're poking flowers in it. And then it was like, ta-da, here's this piece of shit that he just created on stage. And then it just went downhill from there. It was, this piece of it was shit. bad. It was the worst I had ever done. And then the the guy who runs this warehouse, last year I had to go there, or two years ago now, I was going back to do a workshop. And he reached out to one of my friends. He's like, I don't know about this kid. He was here before, and you wouldn't believe the crap he produced. And she was like, he's grown a lot. Just give him a chance. So I did get to go back and redeem myself. But it was total crap. Oh, I love it. It's good. That's, that's what it's all about, though. Like if you don't put yourself out there and try new things, you're never, especially what you're doing, I think that you're you're trying to push the limits all the time. Yeah. I, I want it to be new and I want to try new things. I want people to go, whoa, I never thought about that. Or like, oh, I was never brave enough to try that. And if I fall on my face because of it, so what? You have Fine. to. You have to fall on your face. And the story, it, if it helps other people learn the lesson because I'm the one that fell on my face, I'm totally fine with that. That's fine. And that, that's, that's the thing. I, I feel like you can't have success if you Nobody has success without failures. Oh, gosh. Failures are what lead to success. Yes. So someone's aspiring to get into this business or a business, right? What are your, like, what are things that you'll be like, hey, this is what you have to do. You you can do all of the things that you want to do your way, but these are things that you need to do. So my, my biggest advice to anybody becoming an entrepreneur is to just know and identify your weaknesses and then, you know, have people that take care of that for you. Mine, for instance, is finance. Like I- It's back to back. Yeah. It's back to back people. Like <laughs> creative people are not always good with money. Yeah. And when I started my business, like this was my huge, my biggest downfall was that I just didn't have the appropriate accountant, for example, for what I was doing. Like, and I didn't know anything about that. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of business am I? Like am I, am I like an LLC or a, like a sole proprietor or an S corp? Like how do I file? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. So I hire this accountant who also doesn't know anything about what I'm doing and is just trying to like walk me through this. And you know, you're, you're starting off small. So I'm like, oh, I'm not bringing a ton of money. So I don't need to pay into the IRS, but once a year. Well, when you start to balloon and you start to bring a lot of money in, then all of a sudden like your debt racks up. And then all of a sudden I can't pay that bill at the end of the year. And it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be paying this like four times a year. Well, I didn't know that. Oh, your quarterlies. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, I didn't know about that. And you get fines for and then, those. And you get fines and penalties and interest. And it just racks and racks and racks for three to five years till you're like, wait, how much do I owe? $120,000. Like, what do I do from here? I think, I think this is important. And, and I like this, sh- and I'll share this too. Like, like my first year in real estate, I made more money than I ever made in my life. I mean, I was making like 15, 20 grand a year before I got into real estate. And I did not, I didn't understand what a tax write off was and what a tax write off wasn't. Yeah. There's another one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I get a letter on January like 5th of, I don't know, 17, 16, 17. Saying you owe the IRS thirty five grand, and you're like, for what? I shit my pants first, and then I said, for what? And then I called my accountant and go, what the hell? Did, what the hell did I do? And I didn't have an accountant, so I called an accountant. I said, hey, you're <laughs> you're you're my accountant now. I just fucked up. How do I fix it? Yeah, can you fix this for me, please? And he did. He brought me in. We figured it out. I got it paid off rather quickly, and I never made that mistake again. Yeah, because that is one you don't want to make. Nope, it's not good. So. Step, get somebody to handle your finances if you yep. can handle If you If that's not your thing, then have somebody that knows what to do. Even if it is your thing, I think like you're, as an entrepreneur, especially what you're doing or even other things, your best thing is what you do best. Right. Fine, running the books isn't going to be what you do. And you're not going to spend time on it if it's going to suffer and you're, things are going to slip through the cracks. You're going to lose You're in trouble. And you're going to lose money because you'll, you'll forget certain write-offs sure. that you should be able to write off and you'll forget. Things. And you need to have a system. And if you don't, then you're just a mess. That's, that's funny though. It's back to back. 
entrepreneurs that have said, I'm terrible at finances. Yeah. I like, can just, create the business. I can create the money. Sure. The money then, comes in. Uh, but it's in my account. And then I'm like, yeah, look yeah. at this money. <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> and all the government needs 50 of that? Yeah. Okay, so. Wait a minute. Why do they take so much? <laughs> How does this work? That's, yeah, that's a spot you don't want to be in. No. So good. they'll find your weaknesses. Uh, and, and, and how, do you have employees? Uh, you know, technically, no. You have, so you have indiv- independent contractors? Uh, at the, at the time I have, at this time I have, uh, an, uh, an independent designer. I call her an assistant designer. She's young. She's 21. Okay. And I just pay her to the table. I pay her cash. Okay. Because. We, 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 we won't say that. <laughs> well, we're going to edit that. <laughs> okay. So you don't have employees. Nah. Have you ever had employees? Yes. Okay. I don't like employees. <laughs> okay, tell me why. That's another layer to entrepreneurship is just yeah. how to manage people. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of too much of a free spirit for that. Like, I'm not a great manager. You need to be managed. Kind of. Technically, yeah. you're on the road. You're a superstar. People, like you, you need someone to manage your schedule. Yeah. You need someone to manage your, you know, your calendar, your time, this and that. Yeah. It helps me if I can, like, somebody holds me accountable. Do you have a person? person? I do. I work with multiple teams. So even though like, you know, they're not my boss by any means, they are still like, dude, you need to do this to get here. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'll do that. Like, and they're like, I wish you would do your job. Like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. But so, there's that accountability, right? So the other, like you, you're going out to a, you're going to go on stage out in, let's say California. Yeah. I have, you have somebody. I didn't know this. I'm literally doing this in two weeks. Really? <laughs> I, I did not know that. High schedule. No. <laughs> that was, I talked to Kate. Um, <laughs> So you're going to California. Yeah. And there's a team out there that's saying, hey, we need this, this, and this by this time. Yep. This is crazy. So you really have a show that you can run all by yourself because you've got other people that you're accountable to yep. outside of your business. But then how do you make your bit? how do you make Floral Underground run when you're just gone all the time and you have no employees? So I kind of structured it in a way that I can control it. Here we go. So I, you know, I have a website. I do mostly e-commerce. I actually like my voicemail, if you call it, it tells you to go to my website. Like it specifically says I do not. I am not calling you back. (laughs) Fuck off. Go to my website. Yeah. (laughs) It pretty much says that. And on the website, everything's there. It's like a perfect tool. Like if you need to inquire about something, there's a page for that. If you want to send flowers to somebody, there's a page for that. If you want to subscribe to like my subscription boxes that I do, all the info's there. You can sign right up. There's like no reason to talk to me. What's the with <laughs> Don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. Oh, shit. I don't have any time for that. What's the website? Ringleunderground.com. That's simple. You got that. Yeah, I that's, did get that's it. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, this, I guess, <laughs> don't fucking talk to don't me. Don't talk man. to me. I'm talking on the phone. I don't like it. I got nothing to say to you. I got a website and that's it. As soon as my phone rings, it gives me anxiety. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. He would. Okay. So e-commerce. Yeah. I, uh, so I have a calendar on there that I can block out if I'm going. So I know it's great. Okay. To say. <laughs> <laughs> so if you try to order flowers on my website for when sometime I'm gone, it won't let you. It literally is a blackout day. Really? Yeah. And I try to be conscious of when people are going to be ordering flowers. I'm here this week. It's Valentine's. Yep. Uh, I'm here so people can place orders on my website. But I also try to create resources for if I'm not going to be here, whether it be like a pop-up with another business or I'll manage my subscription. So it's I do it once a month, for example. And it's I'll always choose a week that I'm here and can produce what I need to do for that. So I'm really controlling up my schedule, which is, it's been pretty successful actually the last couple of years. So that's, that's awesome. So e-commerce comes usually with a lot of marketing. Yeah. And I don't market a lot, yeah. uh, just social media really. That's what I was going to wonder. I, I was like, so do you pay, uh, do you do paid ads or? I don't know. And mostly because I don't really want to grow certain things that I'm doing. Like, uh. It's more of like an amenity to my community that I'm serving more than it is like driving dollars in my own. You're very self-aware, it sounds like, with your entrepreneurial journey here. Yeah, I just know what what energy I need to put out to make the appropriate amount of money and like where that lies. And it's, yeah. it's, sometimes it's really obscure. So like I should be putting energy into that, but I can't always because the picture's bigger. But it sounds to me like another common thing out here, and it sounds money isn't the driver. We all need it. Right. We have to have it. It's the necessary. Plenty of ways to make money. I mean, yeah. Like it, it's a necessary evil, but it doesn't sound like it's the driver for you. No, no. I love the idea of thing projects that are scalable, especially if I can like take some kind of passion project and make it scalable. Like that's the big vision, right? 
And I am actually, I'm working on a lot of that right now. Can you share any of it or is it yeah. too, too soon? I mean, I can share a little bit. Actually, you probably don't share. I don't know. They're probably, what, a month away from getting this thing out? So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. Oh, perfect. Great. I don't want anybody to like, steal your stuff. But yeah. If you, what you can share, please Depends share. on who's listening to this. What right? are you scaling? We'll see. Well, maybe nobody. So the, the subscription model I talked about, I started that in 2017. And I, I drew inspiration from Blue Apron. Are you familiar with yep. Blue Apron? Oh, yeah. And what I like about that is, and I subscribe to Blue Apron, is I get these meals, yep. you know, however- Right to your doorstep. You send it. Yeah, it's great. But it's not like a, I microwave it, it's done kind of thing. It's like they send me all the ingredients and then a beautiful recipe card and they tell me how to make this. They're educating me, I'm getting an experience, and I'm crafting this like quality meal with beautiful ingredients. And it's, I always take, it's always on my Snapchat, I always like- Okay. Like, and it's like, I'm not a foodie, I just like to eat. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's like not cheap by any means. Like if I went to the store and bought these, like that, it, but that's not the point. The point is, is I don't know how. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking for, I yeah. don't know. And it is the experience. It's curated for me. So I modeled my subscription on yeah. Trisana after this. You're not so, sending me a bouquet. No, I'm sending you stems and a vase and a tool, and you get a video that tells you how to put it together, like step by step. Awesome. So the success that Blue Apron instilled in me by cooking, like I wanted to have that same success instilled in people who bought my subscription from me. I think that's amazing that you stole for one and it would <laughs> rip off and duplicate. Right? Like, no, anything food. Like yeah. people always eat, everything comes back to food. Yeah. So you can, if something's successful in food, yeah. copy it that's, in whatever your industry is because it'll work. I mean, we call it R&D, right? Rip off and duplicate. Yeah. Rip, 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 duplicate. Never heard that. <laughs> like that. R&D, man. R&D. Yeah. So that's amazing. And how's that, and that, that thing's rocking? So it's, and that could be so much bigger, again, if I put marketing dollars into it, but it is a lot to manage also. And so I've, coined a process which is great now it's taking that and making it into something scalable so like one of the markets i'm working in is grocery mass market or home and garden is how i'm trying to expand this so taking that product and putting it in those spaces like a box not necessarily a box it could just be a shopping experience but like all the components are there so it's about translating the message, having all the, the curated resources there, and then having people on board. Or just like selling flowers in spaces where people aren't buying flowers or aren't, people aren't selling flowers, rather. Interesting. I know, I know, Kate, and we've been trying to get something together with you for like a home, like a home decor. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to pull that off. Um, that's going to happen. So you're going to be here and you're going to do it. I love pop-ups. <laughs> and in, in my mind, what I see is like having this experiential bar. I'm My nickname is Derek the Bartender because I usually am setting up these like decor bars. It's sure. sweet flower bar, fresh flower bar, plant bar, whatever. Yep. Um, and how cool would like a day-long open house be where you're like, you have families coming in and like I'm building terrariums with the kids. That's while the parents are looking at the house. house. So you can bring your kids and not be distracted. Right. Yeah, fuck me. We're going to do, do something like that. So one big thing that I feel, I know in my life, and I hear it all the time, you have to choose the right person in your life. Mm-hmm. Or or it is impossible because they, they will they will not allow you to grow. They will be, like my wife, when I got into real estate, she was like, what are you doing? Your phone's ringing, answer it. I'm like, I don't know who it is. She's like, that's when you answer yeah. the most. Because she'd been in real estate longer than, she'd already been in real estate oh, okay. 15, 13 right. years. Right? Right. That's good to know. She's like, you answer your phone when you don't know the, I'm like, we're a debtor. It's like, yeah. answer your phone. Yeah. Business is calling. Man. Yeah. So she's like, this is it. So like, she allowed me to just grow Yeah. at, at a pace. And, and I used some of the knowledge that she already had right, to help me implement. But like, your partner, mm-hmm. Derek and Derek, Brandon. Brandon. That happens all the time. Brandon. <laughs> everybody. Does. So everybody loves Brandon. Yes. And like the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so your husband, Brandon. Yeah. Sorry, partner. No, that's all right. It's a partner in life. We've right. got to choose our partners. So your husband, has he allowed you to grow like that? And I don't say allow as in like, you know, I'm, I'm permitting you to, but it's the, the, it's the, the instilling that into you into your life for sure i think that he i mean my life or in my entrepreneurship was quite a bit different when we first got together which is now 12 years ago but i think he quickly saw like how everything evolved um and how erratic it could be and uh we kind of worked through those growing pains together like oh what's our communication style if i'm gone on the road like you know, how often do we need to talk on the phone or like, you know, be connected or what do I need to do at the house before I leave or, you know, just things like that. 
And it, there were bumps in the road for, oh, for sure. sure, right? Absolutely. But now we've got a groove. And I make the joke. I was like, oh, man, like if I ever got divorced or or like we weren't together for whatever reason, I was like, how am I going to date anybody? <laughs> Nobody's going to date me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm going to take this on. foster a healthy relationship when you're like gone all the time or like you're just working all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but like that's to do that. So uh, that's it, man. I think I think it's so important because some people, you know, you're not nine to five. No. You can't be. Nope. And and they gotta understand and your partner has to understand and now I, I when I say allow, I don't mean like I permit you to do it. I mean like I want you to do it. Like yeah. their, their personality allows you to grow because you don't feel bad. No, and they're like, I wanna see what happens with this. Yeah. Like how is this this is gonna prosper for us? You don't yeah. feel held back, you don't no. feel bad about having to do that. It's like hey, or, yeah, or just being like, How can I help? Like yeah. what can I do in this situation? So you're gone for a week, you come home, or you just like like me, like tornado, you come in and you've got socks everywhere, your fucking bags <laughs> half unpacked. No, I'm very organized, very meticulous. Okay, that makes sense. What I'm doing. So every, I mean and we've also grown into this space where it's like you know, you hire a cleaning lady. Like, we're too busy for this. Like, yeah. I'm going to pay somebody to yeah. do it, just like in your business. Absolutely. Right? And since we've done that, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I like to get home to my clean house today. Yes. This is the best investment ever. For sure. It's a peace of mind. For sure. And peace of mind's worth, it's, 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 it's priceless. The amount of stress that alleviates just going like it's not a Sunday that I have to clean my house. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can sleep in. You don't do the free clean clean though? Like, oh, totally. Like, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. There's not a thing on a surface in my house when she gets there and like all the laundry's done so she can put it away or put it out and redo the bed, whatever. But still, yeah. you know what I don't have to do? Mop a floor. Yeah. Wipe down a shower. Sure. No, I don't have to dust baseboards. Like, like that. I, we, have, we have a cleaner that comes over on a, on a Monday, let's say. It, was, so it used to be Tuesday. And on Monday, like my wife's anxiety levels to the roof. And I'm like, why are we having a cleaner come over if this is causing you anxiety? <laughs> Like you're cleaning more like she's going to do this. And it's like, I can't do that. It's, it's like the fucking pre-cleaning it's anxiety. Like she could do it better if I pick up everything before she gets here. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think I think that aspect is, I think it's an underrated aspect of entrepreneurship mm-hmm. because the wrong partner holds you back. Yeah. I've seen it a lot, and unfortunately. You have in like a friend group? or and, Yeah, exactly. And just in all walks of life. Me, but... And you can just see how somebody's going to fail in their business because like, they don't have the support in their emotional or their personal life. Or sometimes it's family and mm-hmm. other uh, variety variables. It's, it's insane how, how much of that matters. Yeah, for if sure. You think I control this. Well, you control it right until you invite somebody else into your life. Yeah. And then you both control it so if the, if the other person controlling it isn't in tune it's right. fucked yeah it's real tough it's a dance yeah <laughs> so tell me about the time you're an entrepreneur so you've had this tell me about the time where you're just like you break down you're in your car or you're just sitting in your house you're like i fucking can't do this anymore i have to stop there's have you had that time yeah so mine was financial um and it was, again, back to this conversation about knowing what you're good at, what you're not. And when I got to that breaking point, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Uh, and luckily, I had a friend who was an attorney at the time. She's like, you need to talk to somebody about bankruptcy, which the idea of that is terrifying. Yeah. Because right? sure. that means failure. Uh-huh. But really, it doesn't. Like, you, what you hear about that in, like, media or what it means for big corporations is different from a small entrepreneur. It's like, no, you're underwater. And you're not, you're, you can't pull yourself out because you're not in a position to do that. So that's what an, uh, an attorney does for you. And like, this is your filing. And yet there's parts about it that suck. You're like, oh, my credit's going to be just squashed yep. for seven years. Yep. Like that sucks. Uh, but I did it. I filed, I paid everything back that I owed, you know, all these settlements essentially is what they were. And, uh, I got through it. And I was immediately smarter because of it. And like I, the amount of relief I felt just from going through that process was like, mm-hmm. okay, now we're on the upswing. Like you're at the lowest of lows where you are right there, but then you know everything from there is going to be better. And it has been. So going through that, like that's, yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. That's like door closed. So going down. Yeah. So going through that, but mentally though, up here. Like as you're in the middle of this and you're like, I still have, I, because you, you don't just wipe your debts clean. Oh no, it's ugly. That's what people while. don't understand is like, it's not like bankrupt. I don't owe anybody any money. Right. No, you've protected some assets maybe. Yeah. And I had to pay money, like a structured amount of money for five years. Yep. And it was a lot every month. And it was like, this is a debt I'm taking on, but it's to pay off these other debts. And this is a settlement. So it can no longer accrue penalties, interest, nothing like that. 
And then once that's done, five years later, which seemed like an eternity, it was just like a breath of fresh air. But then it's like, oh, your credit is still smeared. So like, I'm going to go get a car. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> Holy shit. You're yeah. going to make it work yeah. until all of that is wiped clean. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. I know that's not fucking something that's fun yeah. to talk about. It's heavy. But that's um that's important because, again, I always say this to people. There's somebody out there right now that's about to go through this, mm -hmm. right? And maybe they hear this, maybe they don't, but maybe they hear it not from my podcast, but maybe on a clip we share with you and you put it out and then someone that you know knows somebody and all of a sudden the word gets out and yeah. says, whoa, okay, he's been through it. Maybe I could reach out with a, with a, with a fucking text message. I'm not going to call Derek. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and maybe if a friend calls, hey, Derek, I have a buddy going through this right now, would you please give him 10 minutes? I'm, I'm sure you would. Totally. Absolutely. Because you know, that, that's got to be just emotional probably to think about right now. Yeah. Going through that process. Oh, God, yeah. And being, you know, like, you know, 27 years old, 28 years old, like, you know, being in this business position and just accruing this crippling debt and then just like kind of shrugging it off, like, it, it'll fix itself. Well, it'll take care of itself. And it doesn't. Yeah. And then you get to this point, it's like, well, okay, I'm 30 years old and- now I have to do this. Awesome. Did you owe, was it IRS money? IRS, state of Michigan. So it was all tax money. It was all tax money. <laughs> and they don't stop. No, they're relentless. You can't ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> they so will find you. They, they will, will find you. They will levy you. Oh, uh, yeah. Your money's not safe. Like, if you, even if you feel like you've got some of it, it's like, they'll take it. Yeah, right out of your bank. Yep. Go on. Mm-hmm. So you you go through this, man. Mm -hmm. That is that is intense. So before you go through this, obviously you're making a bunch of money. Clearly, mm -hmm. go through this. Yeah, and you're just spending it. Yeah, because it's there. Okay, yeah, you're just so like, wow, I'm like, I mean, yeah. so successful right now. Yeah. Look at all this, all this money I build and came in. Like I'm gonna build my business. Like so, even if you're like sinking it back in and keeping some for you, it's not good enough. You got to pay that. I already found that percent. <laughs> so so you just because I I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering where it came from. Did you just not think I didn't think about. It. I thought actually I thought I was doing a couple of things to write things off. Like, well, I, I can write that enough, right? Twelve grand off. Yeah. And I was like, and they're like, well, no, you write off twelve grand, but that doesn't save you twelve grand. No, that saves you a portion of your taxes. Like, right. You write off a hundred grand, and you're in the thirty nine percentile. You save thirty nine grand. Oops. Yep. <laughs> not a hundred grand. No. And another one for me, which is probably different from you, is just sales tax. Yeah. I'm selling oh, like. Oh fuck. Yeah. So that was something you know. Oh, a couple of times a year when you're doing three or four weddings, it's fine. But then when you go from like four weddings to a dozen to twenty to thirty, and then you're building these other accounts outside of that, off six percent off all that. Sure. You're not paying that in monthly, like that stacks, and then you get billed a penalties and interest off. Did you did man? This is this is such a learning lesson for people. Did you also did you have your Michigan sales tax license and all that stuff? I did, yeah. So you had all that, yeah. And and, and then so you're 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 billing out. I mean, thousands and thousands right. of dollars. So your tax your taxes are hundreds and thousands of hundreds yeah. then two into thousands of dollars. In my brain at the time, you know, I'm looking at this sales tax line, going, okay, associating this number with taxes, and it's not the same thing. No, not at all. Not even close. Comes off every sale. Yeah. It's like. And like, percent, right, percent. yeah, there's no write-offs on that. Nope. <laughs> it's six. You, 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 yeah, you don't get to keep that money. You spend nothing about that money. You make a hundred bucks, you give me six. Yep. And so you were just keeping all that money. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the point in time, that's why we're doing this though. That's why like, I think it's important for people like you not just to talk about the floral. I think, I think you're somebody with a story right there, man. Like this was not where this was going today, but it has to sometimes naturally flow mm -hmm. here. Like you have a story that you can tell people. That could probably save their business. Yeah. If 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 you really would like, if you would go outside of that comfort level, like hey, but or incorporate it into like if you're talking to entrepreneurs about a floral company. Right. By the way, now we're gonna talk about the shit that's not fun to talk about. Yeah. Out of the gate, I'm like, who's your accountant? Yeah. Oh, you don't have one. You're gonna do the books, really, and you're gonna do the day to day <laughs> operations of a floral so shop. Do that. You're gonna fail. Yeah. Like 100. percent You're gonna miserable. And I now my accounting firm that I've hired, I am I pay their top tier for what they charge their customers because yep. I don't want to touch it. I'm going to send everything to you guys yep. and you are held accountable. Everything gets paid. I have to sign or fill out or submit whatever I need to. Like every month I do my reporting and I turn it over to them. But you're just working on your A work. Right. You're doing what Derek does best. Yep. Everything else fucks off. Yeah. No, that's not and my problem. Lack of a better. Yep. I know what's going on at all times because I can see it, yeah. but I also don't care. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you're taking all my money, you're giving it to the government, great. So, uh, <laughs> I know. So any, so 
in there though, was there ever a time where you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna pay this back and I quit and I'm just gonna do the job and Well, I mean that is a tough one, right? <laughs> that's that, yeah, that's why I it. always and I'll I'll put it like this. Even if I have a job, like and I will always have a business also. Yep. And that was asked of me. It's like if we bring you on in this position as like a an employee. Will you stop? Will you give up your business? And my first question is, do you have a moonlight policy? <laughs> oh, you don't? Then no. <laughs> then I will not. Then I shan't. And I can use my business for R and D. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the real meeting. <laughs> yeah. And and then research and develop. Right. Or... Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> and that can feed. You know, I can try things there because like things can fail there, and that's fine because I have this other crutch maybe. Yep. And so I'll just always have that. Okay. Do you ever see yourself? Not like working for somebody. Else. I mean, do you ever see yourself working for somebody else? Uh, yeah, in a limited capacity, or like I would have to have a lot of autonomy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand that. So, all right, there's the lowest low. <laughs> the high. What's the highest? Like, what's the highest high where you're like, this is fucking going to the moon. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like the next. I'm gonna have my own TV show. <laughs> when was that? As much as, as much as I would love that. <laughs> That being on the reality show is like a really big deal to me because that's like something people will have on their checklist, right? 100%. But I feel like if you compare that to like just success, like right now where I am, I'm the most successful I've ever been. Love it. And I've got opportunities that are in front of me now that I, I, I didn't even have in my, my vision at all at the time. Like I just couldn't think as big as things are going right now. And that's pretty cool. Um, So I'm working on some of these things that if they if they take off like i'm always the skeptic too especially when i have to work with other people or, okay or company when it's not solely in your control exactly yep. then that's a lot of trust you have to put into something to make it work you have to work really hard and you have to depend on other people and i don't deal well with that yeah. but uh if those things take off like i'm looking at i want to be a national brand yep. i want floral underground to be this cool brand that people buy flowers from and um, I'm associated with that. My face is on it. It's yeah. like me. It's a style. It's like I'm in charge of that, curating what that is, what those stems are, what the color palettes are, what the vases are, what the experience is, where the education comes from. When you see it, you know it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that. Oh, that's Florida Underground. Right. No matter where you are in the country. Yeah. In the world. And being in new spaces where like floral doesn't even exist yet. And then like there's my brand. Explain me. What, is, okay, what do you think? What do you, give me some. Like, I'll give you a small example. Theater? I mean, maybe yeah. like, uh, you know, there are like people are doing these vending machines now where you can buy, you, they'll put them in malls or zoos or botanical um, uh, spaces or airports. Like, okay. And that's not new. They've had those before, but now there's like these big bougie ones. Uh, but they're branded, right? So you can get flowers there. Well, a lot of spaces that don't have uh, flowers are like home and garden centers. So I'm partnering right now with Garden Goods. Okay. Local business. They don't sell flowers because they're not in that space. Like to sell flowers, you have to have a distributor of some kind that you get flowers from. Um, you also have to arrange them or style them. And a lot of people don't uh, have the right place to store them or have an idea of how long you can store them if they're not in proper storage. And there's like all these variables, right? So I try to make that easy, put something there to sell flowers for Valentine's Day like I am now. Yes. And I'm kind of taking care of it, but the goal would be eventually like they know how to buy from distribution, quality product that they are educated on and can take care of, and then they can sell that in their business. Then that doesn't exist right now for them. Wow. You got big plans. Trying. <laughs> well, you do, and yeah. now that you can see it, you can actually make it happen. Because it yeah. seems like to me, you're super connected in this world. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you're the connector at this point in time. I feel like that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's a great space to be. So, all right, your subscription box. Mm -hmm. Do you have a do you have a co-packer that that does that, or is that I will still do all of that? So you, so where do you have the like? Do you have a space to store? Do you have a yeah, I have a studio in town. Okay. I'm over in the True Fit Trouser Complex. Oh, you are? Yeah. Over by Melissa? Yes. Okay, great. I just texted her today. I said, hey, we got to get you lined up here. <laughs> She'd be another great. Oh, person. she's awesome. Thank you for sure. So you're over there. You have a little studio. You have yeah. the freezer. I mean, it's got a cooler there. And I also have it. It's a workspace. So like I can work out of there, but also host events there. So like I do hands-on workshops or nice. people will rent it from me to do little parties or whatever in sure. that space. And usually I integrate my business with that, like. Um, Misha Neidorfler, her daughter had her 16th birthday there. Oh, nice. We did a terrarium workshop for all her guests. So they set up a little spread. 
So it's like space. And that's what I kind of like. This is kind of my business way. It's like, I don't want a space just to pay for and go to. Like, yep. It's got to make money. For sure. How do I do that? <laughs> so like, there's always creative ways to do that. Do you envision a time getting so big that you can't handle like filling all the subscriptions? Yeah, actually, I would love to make it so scalable that I can hand that part off to another business. Maybe it's like a bouquet company. Yep. And then I'm the creative director of what the style is of what's going out. I choose the flowers in it. I choose the design. Like, And I'm the person on the camera that is teaching people how to do it. And they do all the fulfillment. The fulfillment like shows up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that was the goal when I developed it was to scale to something like that. That's so not, so definitely not like a co-packer situation where there's, right. cause you don't know what the fuck you're going to get. You might get brown flowers. You might get bad stamps. I'd be bad. <laughs> it would be shit. And I'm, I've had, shit happens too. Like people open something and something's broken and I'm like, damn it. So I like, I got to credit or I got to, if it's local, I can re-deliver something sure. perfectly. And some people are picky yeah. like about some things and some people will just love what they get. <laughs> what is um all right so we talked about low lows high highs what people need to know first get into the business like how do they how does somebody market themselves to do the things you're doing because you don't just start selling flowers and all of a sudden someone goes oh yeah Derek this guy this guy is great he'll do it like you have to be out there somehow yeah you market you, yourself like, yeah I'm doing you have to get yourself in front of people again this was me going after Red Ginger for example it's uh-huh. like I want this business. And then that can turn into like, oh, they have a private event space so I can do flowers for them in that capacity. So going after it and like putting your work out there. Nowadays, I feel like in a space, in a creative space, it's easier because of things like Instagram and TikTok. But you have to be active on that kind of stuff. And I'm kind of lazy when it comes to that because that's sure. a lot of work. That's yep. like somebody's job. Yep. And if I've been working on something, like the last thing I want to do is record it, take pictures about it, talk about it. Like I'm done with that. Like I've moved on from that. Yeah. But if you're trying to get yourself out there and you're new, like you just need to record your whole process, the whole thing. And people want to see personality and they yeah. want to see your character and they want to see how you got from A to Z and in, in your creating process. And they want to see like, oh, I didn't order enough stuff. Here's how I solved that problem. And they they want to see like, you know, oh, this came in dead. What am I going to do? And then it's like, ooh, you know what I mean? <laughs> reality tv <laughs> have you thought about like tiktok shop i you know i'm interested in it i think it's cool i haven't bought anything yet and i'm definitely this might be my age group saw something on the tiktok shop and i went to amazon and bought it it's <laughs> like that's kind of not the point but i'm like do i trust this i don't know so you know ellie yeah you know, aren't you doggo right. like, that's how our whole business runs it's through the TikTok channel. And well yeah and it's the reason i was thinking about this for you and it's funny like this 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 podcast turns into like like me connecting people too as well, because that's my favorite thing to do. Like your personality would play so well on like a TikTok live to where you could, people would literally be ordering from you while you were doing the things you love to do. I'm serious. That's what <laughs> well, it's, it's funny that you explain it like that too, because uh, this company that I work for, uh, they want me on QVC with some of their products yeah. because it's personality and it's education. Yeah, fuck that. Right? Do it yourself. Well, and it's, it's like, that's what TikTok is now. So it's like, what demographic are you trying to reach right yeah. now? Exactly. No, like this, this it's crazy. Because if, if you ever want to see how she does it, she is on five to seven every night. Oh, okay. And if she misses five to seven and seven to nine TikTok live, all she does is she packages up her dog. And I say all she does, like it's- <laughs> like, No big deal. Yeah, fuck, it's easy. But I'm saying she's not put on some big production. Right. She stands in front of the camera. She packages up orders that have already come in, talks to the people that are on there. Yeah. Feeds her dogs some treats to show people local favorite, like like they're her dog's favorites, right? And um, and then people will comment like, "Oh, my dog loved this, didn't love that." And then she'll read that and she'll say, "Oh, your dog didn't like that. Let me put a let me put a free bag of this. See if they like that." It's like whoa, right? So now she's putting a free bag. She opens the box up. She just closed, put a free bag in it, and there's like, then all of a sudden it's like ding 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 ding. <laughs> order, order. And she has a subscription based business too. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm just I'm just like yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to. Like, That's pretty cool. I think like just your personality on camera, your personality in general is already fucking amazing. I, right? <laughs> I think you. Well, you're out there. Like you just you just got that personality where it's like you're easy to talk to. Every time I see you, I give you a hug. Yeah. Like no matter where we're at, right? It's you're easy. Just you're just an easy guy to get along with, and your like personality that. shines. And I like personality. And people like personality, right? Yeah. So you're just drawn to that. So just imagine like one hour of Derek, even three times a week. On TikTok, like designing flowers and mm-hmm. putting it on a school, and then people just ordering your shit in the yeah. background. Yeah, something to think about, man. I know. You, something to think about. I know you're a busy guy, but you seem the type of dude that that <laughs> looks for more shit. 
Always. <laughs> yeah. I'm always looking for the next shit. Like, yeah. You can, nice. the, you can be the biggest floral brand on TikTok. That would be awesome. And then you know, TikTok you know, is yeah. crazy. I put some TikToks out there and some of them are received pretty well. And then, yeah. Well, I'm I think, just not consistent. You know? Yeah. That, that's, but you, but the thing is, though, is you're here and you're not here at this podcast. You're here in life and your business because you are consistent. Right. At something. At something. Yeah. So what do you do consistently that makes you the best? I mean, consistently, I can tell you that I have a following because I'm always on stage or I'm always doing these shops. Yep. Um, so I am in front of people in some way, shape, or Putting yourself out there. Right. Nonstop. Always. Yeah. And, and for, I'm guessing it started off with like 10 people, 15, then 100, and then 200. Yeah. And sometimes I have a huge draw and it's really successful. And sometimes I've got six people and I treat them the same. They're, they're, they're so important. Yeah. You they know, showed up. And you know who <laughs> they are. Like, like, yeah. like, A, they show up to see you. So you got to give them your best. Yeah. B, they might know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that's like, holy yeah. shit, to change your whole life. Always. So I think that's that's amazing. But uh, yeah, I think your personality is such that, that obviously putting you in front of people is going to be the best way to sell anything for you. That's how it's been. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no, no doubt about it, man. So what um, all right, what's next for Derek and Floral Underground or another project? Um, I Well, I was actually working on something that was supposed to launch this Valentine's Day, and it it didn't because we hit some snags, and you do in, in when you're building a new process especially, so hoping to get some of that off the ground. We've touched on it a little bit here is this like national brand thing. Like I'm really, that's next. That's going. It's either going to take off in one space. And if it doesn't, then I'm moving it to another space. I'll put it that I way. fucking love, <laughs> I love the attitude like that, that, that confidence and the attitude of like, it's fucking going to happen. It's, I'm going to make this happen. So it's funny, dude. Like, again, I always tell people like it's happening. Yeah. Like if you, if you set a goal and you start to take the steps, you don't have to wait for it to happen. It is already happening. You're right. living that dream. You're living that goal. Yeah. You just haven't, the end date's not there. Like, right. you know, for example, I told everybody I'm losing 40 pounds, right? In my mind, that 40 pounds is already gone. I'm only down 17, but that 40 pounds is already gone. I just need a calendar to get there. Right. So it'll be gone. What's the timeline? You know? Right? Yeah. Like, so that's it. Like when one day I'm going to be down 40 pounds mm-hmm. and that's just someday in the future. But it's happening. Right. My goal is it's happening. Right. Yeah. So that's how I look at that. Like I and I don't I'm just just this conversation is probably the most in depth we've ever talked. But knowing your personality now, it's like fuck this guy's gonna be everywhere. Hopefully. I'm gonna see your shit on like like every storm and walk you like that's fucking Derek. Yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be He was right. I'm gonna be in Arizona. <laughs> right there. <laughs> I'll be in Arizona in a fucking like like some sort of whatever shop and just fucking yep. like, holy shit. Derek's everywhere. This fucking restaurant in the middle of nowhere. How do they know about Derek? And then there it is. Yeah, dude. I think I think you're I think you're an amazing you're you're an amazing example of grit and and of like just stick to itiveness because clearly you've been through some shit. Oh yeah. Have you had any ugly cry moments? Oh god, yeah. Come One on. of them's on the reality show. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew they were gonna put it on there too because they're like, oh, this is juicy, <laughs> like just falling apart. <laughs> Have you ever had? Okay, so as entrepreneurs. Sometimes your best days are followed by your worst days, and sometimes like your worst your worst time is followed like five minutes after your best time. Sure. So do you have that? Do you, do you, do you still ride that entrepreneurial roller coaster a little bit? I feel like I'm a little bit more even keeled now. You figure yeah. out a little bit. Yeah, and I I feel like I have a strong support system, whether that be like through Brandon or yep. through other uh, people or companies that I work for. Like yep. if I need help, it's there. You just got to ask for it. Well, you did at some point in time have that right. This this yeah fucking yeah. Holy shit. And if I would have uh, put a little bit more trust or faith in other people at the time or asked for help at the time, maybe I wouldn't have been so down at certain points and could have been higher at other points just by asking for help because lesson, help is there. Lesson learned, man. Like That's a huge lesson for people that are trying to get into, a, into something. Yeah. Do not be afraid to ask. No. It can still be your idea. Yeah. And people ask me for help all the time and I'm immediately going to help them. Because you know. You know what it looks like if you don't. Yeah. And you don't want them to fail. And I, I, you know, I'm friends with all these flower shops in town and they've, you know, I've had people come in. They're like, I am going to die if I can't get this done tonight. And I was like, I'll be right there. Like I'll come over and I'll like crank some things out for some people or it's a wedding and there's something's failing or whatever. Like I'll, I'll be there for people because I always want to believe that if I ask them for help, they'll help me too. 
So you seem like this is you seem like the hardest working man in the floral business. Oh my god, I literally at a show a couple of times got called like the hardest working man in show business. Because I'll be the person that's on the stage, and then I'll be the one schlepping the buckets away after the program is done. I don't walk away from it. I love it. Like, oh, I talked to all the people in the audience, and now I got to clean up all this stuff. Yeah. People are just like, wow, you want to have a drink? I'm like, 20 minutes. <laughs> like, I got to do this first, and then I'll come back to that. No, I, I actually <laughs> do it upstairs. I, I actually still take trash. I go, out, I go around each, each agent's office, and I'll grab the trash, and I'll take it. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm fucking taking the trash out. Like it's, 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 it's overflowing. I'm it's, thinking it up. it's a job that needs yeah. to be done. Someone's got to do it. it. I refuse to ask. There's a lady in the office. I, ref, I refuse to ask a woman to make coffee. I refuse to, <laughs> I, I just won't. Like it feels so fucking feels barbaric right. and old. <laughs> it's like, Hey, will you put a nice pot of coffee on for us? I just can't do it. Yeah. I don't know why, but I'm it's. get my ass up and walk over there and make a pot of coffee. I'll go do it. Or I'll ask, ask Kyle to do it. But I, I can't, like, I just can't. Or I'll ask Trent to, I'll ask, Trent, can you make a pot of coffee at a meeting? I can't. <laughs> fucking do it like i i want to do it or i need somebody else to do it yeah. just, it seems like old and barbaric <laughs> hey woman make the coffee <laughs> i don't like, like it so dude i just i could talk to you for hours because i feel like i have a lot of shit to learn from you just in the entrepreneurial world can i come back then yeah you have to. <laughs> no you're gonna have to because you're gonna go out and you're gonna create this national brand yeah right and even before that you're gonna go out and do other cool shit and you've got to come back and and tell us where you are now well, I want to walk you through the process that I can't right now. Yeah. At the, I will be able to eventually. I can't. I can't. <laughs> and I can't wait for that day because I've honestly, I've gotten little nuggets that I'm going to use in my own life. And I'll credit you for those. Oh, thank you. <laughs> on Facebook, on social media, whatever it is. But like, I just think that you're you're the type of dude that you're, your heart's so big, you're willing to give your energy, which there's a lot of people that are so protective. And I'm sure you are, but you're willing to give it to people who deserve it. For sure. So yeah. just show me you're worthy of it, and you can have all of it. I also know, like, you pay it forward, like, it's good juju. It, you know, it, it definitely does. It comes back a thousand times. Yep. I've never done something that, I've never done the act of kindness that didn't have an enormous ROI unintentionally. It wasn't like, mm -hmm. if I do this, I'll get that. Yeah. Like, you show something, you do something for someone one day, and the next thing you know, like, somebody, they refer 15 friends to you, and you're yeah. like, holy fuck, what, like, that, why'd you do that? Where'd this come from? Right. Remember that time you came to my house and you helped me do this with my computer? I'm like, and 15 years ago? Yeah, it's like, no, I remember that. <laughs> what are you even talking about? <laughs> and you do it because that's just who you are. Yeah. So, man, be a good person. Work hard. Fucking don't quit. Say It sounds like you say yes to a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I can, it can be a detriment. <laughs> no, but I think it's important because like this podcast, right, that you gave me an hour of your time for, a little over now, you got to leave, I think. Good. I'm already late. Okay, good. <laughs> You gave me an hour of your time, and this podcast hasn't even officially launched yet. And you gave me an hour of your time. Like, to me, that's fucking unbelievable. Like, you you said yes because you don't know where that leads. Yeah. It's like the fucking adventure, build your own adventure story. You want to be on a podcast with Sam? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> Duh. What's it about? Well, like, <laughs> exactly. I just said yes, but what, what are we talking about? Exactly. <laughs> you say more yes, you say yes to more shit. So, like, especially as a young entrepreneur, I think, like, you have to work hard. You have to worry, not, not worry about sleepless nights. You have to reinvest your money, but you have to say yes to opportunities or things that might look like opportunities. Yeah. You can always, because if you don't, it doesn't work out, you can learn from it. Right. And something might seem like obscure. I have a lot of obscure things happen in my life. And it's like, I'm just going to do it because maybe this or that could come out of it. Like something might come out of it. And if it didn't, a great conversation came. Yeah. Oh, well. Fuck it. Well, I'll let you go, man. That was amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I, I did. I, I mean, I knew that I knew you were a floral superstar. I didn't know you were like the superstar. <laughs> so it feels honored, like really honored that you took this time to like just to come talk to us and, and share the story. And floralunderground.com. Do not fucking call Derek. <laughs> floral under doc, floralunderground.com. The phone number's not even on the website. Order away. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Order away, and we're going to have you back because I want to hear about every all the steps you took to build that next thing. All right. Uh, thank you, man. Thanks.